The team group T-Force Vulcan G 1TB is a SATA SSD that is launched in a market that is not only shifting towards M.2 SSDs but shifting towards high capacity M.2 SSDs. However, that does not mean that a SATA SSD has no place or no value, especially for the right price. The T-Force Vulcan G 1TB is advertised as a budget option for gaming and regular systems and we shall see if the price and performance offered are worth your time. The team group T-Force Vulcan G1 Terabyte is available for purchase right now for 80 US dollars, at least for the 1 terabyte variant, and in some cases you can get it as low as 60 US dollars with a discount. But since discounts are not really permanent, I will say that this SSD is priced at 80 US dollars, just to be sure. The T-Force Vulcan G1 Terabyte is a SATA SSD, something that replaced hard drives and is being replaced by M.2 SSDs, which are smaller and faster, but they have a higher temperature and are expensive. The T-Force Vulcan G 1TB is made to be as good as it can be, given the price. The low price is highlighted by the packaging which offers barely any protection. You get a cardboard box and a plastic tray and that's about it. You get nothing in terms of accessories and that's for the best honestly speaking. From a design standpoint, the T-Force Vulcan G is a good looking SSD with an all black metal casing and chromed inserts in the shape of the Vulcan logo and the T-Force series emblem. The backside of the SSD has the label with the serial number, model number and the warranty. You also get a nice sticker that if broken will void your 3 year warranty. Opening the SSD reveals the PCB and just how small it is. I'd say that the PCB of this SSD takes up around 20% of the space inside the metal casing. The rest is just open space for air. This approach is nothing new and if you are asking yourself why not make the SSD case smaller to accommodate the small PCB, it's simple. Modifying the tooling at the factory that is making these SSD casings is more expensive than whatever the factory would save in materials and production costs with a smaller SSD case. The highlight of this SSD is the controller, made by Silicon Motion, with the model number SM2258XTG. This controller is a 4-channel flash controller and is known to be compatible with SSDs that do not have a DRAM cache, such as this one. The memory chips used on the T-Force Vulcan G, the 1TB variant in our case, are made by Toshiba and are the 64-layer 3D TLC NAND flash type memory chips. The 1TB variant of this SSD has a total of 4 memory chips installed on both sides of the PCB. The first test is using the Windows Explorer file copy system. It's a simple test really. I created a folder with a total size of 90GB on the SSD and then I will copy it on the SSD. This way you will get to see the transfer speed using the large files on the T-Force Vulcan G, with file size under 100GB mind you. And you can immediately see that the speed starts off good at around 2.2GB per second and then quickly drops to 270MB per second and then moves up and down between 260MB per second and 290MB per second. To copy the entire 90GB folder, the T-Force Vulcan G 1TB needed 5 minutes give or take. This result places the team group Vulcan G 1TB on the lowest part of our file copy test graph, next to other budget SATA SSDs. The first synthetic test uses the Crystal Dismark 8 benchmark, a popular test that is free, easy to use and delivers reliable results. And in the read test, the team group Vulcan G 1TB is right in front of the crucial BX500 1TB and behind the Goodram RDM Pro Gen 2 1TB. When we talk about the writing test though, the team group Vulcan G 1TB is slightly behind the crucial BX500 1TB and ahead of the crucial MX 500GB. Quite a good result for such a cheap 1TB SSD and it shows that the T-Force Vulcan G 1TB is trading paint with the main competition from Crucial and Goodram, both models being affordable SATA SSDs, although the MX and BX models are starting to gain up in prices. The next test uses the Ato Disk Benchmark, again a popular benchmark for testing storage devices, although this one offers more results. And in the reading test, the T-Force Vulcan G 1TB is in between the crucial BX500 1TB and Silicon Power Ace A55 1TB. While in the reading test, the T-Force Vulcan G 1TB is ahead of the crucial BX 1TB and behind the MX500 500GB. 
The final test is a video game loading test, using Shadow of the Tomb Raider running at maximum settings. The game is installed on the SSD, and in this test, the T-Force Vulcan G1TB needed 21.5 seconds to finish, a result that places this SSD in between the crucial MX500 and the Goodram IRDM Pro Gen 2 1TB, or in other words, exactly where a SATA-based SSD that uses TLC flash memory chips will be. The team group T-Force Vulcan G1TB is an affordable SATA SSD that does its job with no thrills and no events. This SSD does not overheat at all, it is easy to install and will be instantly recognized by most if not all systems. What this SSD is good for is mass storage at an affordable price, however, if you are looking for speed, you might as well invest into an M.2 SSD and deal with all that comes with such an SSD. The T-Force Vulcan G1TB is great for mass storage, especially for gaming and backups. While not the fastest SSD in the world by today's standards, it will still manage to hold its own against other SATA-based SSDs, the crucial BX500 1TB being the main competition in terms of the performance. The internal build quality is good, the soldering is done well and the components used are of high quality, with a silicon motion 4-channel flash controller and Toshiba made 64-layer 3D TLC NAN flash type memory chips. Unfortunately, to keep production costs and prices low, this SSD does not have a DRAM cache installed. Instead, it uses an older SLC type cache. This SSD is good for a gaming system that is made on a budget and especially good for backups and mass storage. If you want that and are prepared to deal with a longer waiting time, then the team group T-Force Vulcan G1TB is a great choice for you, especially at the given price. If you like this review, then you might consider subscribing for more and if you want to support me in a direct way, then in the description below you will find the links for both the Patreon and the Star pages of this channel.